Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Rocks Garage. I'm your host, Dan, and on today's episode, we're gonna be installing part number LIFT-503 on a club car precedent. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at what comes with the kit and the tools that we're gonna to need to perform our installation. When you open up your kit, you're gonna find your brand new A-arm assembly, which is gonna have your new heavy-duty lower A-arms and your new spindles. And then after that, you're gonna have your new upper A-arms, your rear lift blocks, your rear shock mounting plates, your rear centering plates, your two bags of hardware, and your instructions. Now that we've taken a look at all the parts, let's take a look at the tools we're gonna to need to perform our installation. We have a cordless impact gun with a 19 millimeter socket. We have 13 millimeter sockets in both shallow and deep well. We have a 15 millimeter socket as well as a 17 millimeter socket. We also have a 15 16 socket. We have our ratcheting wrench as well as our necessary extensions. We also have a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench as well as a 17 millimeter wrench. We have a small pry bar, a tape measure, and of course, some safety glasses. And now that we've taken a look at all the tools, let's go ahead and jump into the installation. Now before we get started, we wanna make sure we take a few safety precautions. We wanna make sure we turn our cart off, set our parking brake, and if we have an electric cart, we're gonna switch our tow run switch to tow. And once that's done, we can shock our back wheels, jack the front of the car up, and take the front wheels off. Now that our wheels and tires are removed, we have a little bit easier access to remove our front bumper. And now that our front bumper is removed, we can go ahead and remove both of our hubs. And now that our hubs are removed, we can go ahead and remove our tie rod ends from our spindles. Now that we've removed our tie rod ends, we can go ahead and move our spindles out of the way so we can access the bolts for the shocks. We can go ahead and remove those now as well. Sometimes these clevises can get pinched and squeezed on the bottom of your shock. So if your shock is stuck in your clevis mount, you can go ahead and just tap it out with a mallet. Now that those shocks are removed, we can go ahead and remove the three bolts that are holding our steering rack on and you can go ahead and discard those at this time. And once we remove those three bolts on your steering rack, that'll allow you to access the bolts for the upper A-arms. We can go ahead and remove those at this time as well. Now that those upper A-arm bolts are removed, our next step is to remove the four bolts that hold our leaf spring in place. And when we remove those four bolts, the whole front assembly will drop as one piece. Before we install our new A-arm assembly, we're gonna take a little bit of the supplied locking compound and we're gonna put it on each one of the four bolts that will hold that A-arm assembly in place. Now that our new A-arm assembly is in place, our next step is to install our new upper A-arms. Now, in order to identify which one is which, you want to make sure that the curve of the A-arm goes towards the front of the cart and your shock mount is facing up. We're going to install these using the original hardware. And I'm just going to leave that loose until we get this assembled. Now that our A-arm is loosely installed, our next step is to attach our camber plate to that A-arm. So, on your camber plate, you'll notice that there are five different adjustment slots. We're gonna put our hardware in the second from the outside, at least for now. If we need to make any camera adjustments later on, we can go ahead and do that later. And because of the powder coating, you might have to thread your bolt through. And once all three bolts are in place, we can go ahead and tighten them down. And once those three camber bolts are in place, we can go ahead and tighten down the A-arm at the frame side. And then after you've tightened down that A-arm, our next step is to attach our shock. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to place our jack underneath the A-arm. We're gonna jack it up just a little bit, take some of the pressure off of that leaf spring, and then we can go ahead and attach our shock. Now that we've got everything buttoned up on the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same process on the driver's side. Now that we've got everything buttoned up, our next step is to attach our steering rack using the supplied hardware. And with that new hardware, the spacer that comes with that is gonna go behind your steering rack in between your steering rack and the frame. When you're reinstalling your steering rack, chances are you're gonna have to loosen the lock bolt on the steering column. This will allow the steering column to extend a little bit and that'll give you some more play to help line up your bolt holes. Now that our steering rack is attached, our next step is to attach our steering rack to our spindles. Before we do that, we're gonna make sure that we straighten out our steering wheel so that everything stays center when we go to align our cart.
Now that our steering rack is attached to our spindles, our next step is to install our OE hubs onto those spindles. Now, if you have some older hubs or your cart's been sitting outside for a while, you might need to sand down those spindles to get those hubs to go on. You're also gonna to wanna to put a little bit of grease on there and that'll help get your hubs on these spindles as well. And then once your hub is on your spindle, you can go ahead and put your nut on the spindle and tighten that down. Now we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. And before we put our new wheels and tires on, I'm gonna do a little bit of an eyeball alignment just so that when we let the cart down off the jack stands, I can still move it around in the shop without damaging anything. And now that we've done a rough alignment, we can go ahead and install our new wheels and tires. Once our wheels and tires are on, we can go ahead and jack the cart up a little more, take it off the jack stand, and lower it down on the ground. And now that our wheels and tires are installed, we can go ahead and flip the cart around and begin working on the rear of the cart. And now that our cart is flipped back around, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we chalk our front wheels, set our parking brake, turn our cart off, and switch it back into the tow mode if we have an electric cart. After that's done, we can go ahead and jack the cart up in the air, secure it on some jack stands, and take the wheels and tires off. Now that our wheels and tires are removed, our next step is to remove our shocks from the shock mounts on both sides. Once that's done, we can go ahead and place our jack back underneath our rear axle. We're not going to jack it up too far, we just want to support the weight of that rear axle. Now that our shocks are removed, we can go ahead and begin the disassembly of our rear axle. We're going to start first with the U-bolts. Once that U-bolt is out, we can go ahead and remove the two bolts, the one in the front and the one in the back of the leaf spring, and we can remove the leaf spring from the cart. And now that our leaf spring is removed, we're gonna go ahead and lower the axle down away from the body. Now that that axle is dropped down, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory leaf spring on top of the axle. Now that our leaf spring is loosely installed, our next step is to install our new rear riser block. Now, you'll notice that the riser block has a slope to it. The slope of this riser block is gonna go to the front of the cart. Now that our riser block is in place, our next step is to place our new shock mounting bracket on top of the leaf spring. After that's done, we can go ahead and assemble our centering plate. And once that's done, we can go ahead and assemble our rear axle using our new seven inch bolts. If you're having some issues getting your plates to line up, you can go ahead and temporarily release your parking brake just to give you some slack in your brake line to move these brackets around. And once you've got your bolts snug down on your driver's side, we can go ahead and jump over to the passenger side and complete the exact same process. Now that the passenger side of our cart is installed, we can go back through the rear end of the cart and tighten down any loose hardware. But before we do that, if you loosened your parking brake at any point during this time, go ahead and re-engage that, and then we can go ahead and start tightening down our hardware. Once you verify that all of your hardware is tightened down, we can go ahead and jack the cart up a little bit higher and install our new wheels and tires. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and flip our cart back around and perform our alignment. Now we've got our cart turned around, our next step is to perform our alignment. Now after a visual inspection, I noticed that we had a little bit too much positive camber, so I'm gonna go ahead and jack the cart up and remove the two front wheels so I can adjust the camber with those five adjustment areas that we had before. So like I mentioned before, we have five different camber positionings that we can use on our cart. So what I'm gonna do is because I have too much positive camber, which means the top of the wheel is too far out, I'm gonna adjust this in one more position and see where we're at. Now that I've moved those bolts one more camper position in and tighten them down, I can go ahead and install my new wheel and tire and repeat the exact same process on the other side. Now we've got our camber set where we want it, our next step is to adjust our toe. So in order to do that, we're going to need to release our jam nuts and then we're going to adjust the tie rod ends to make any of those adjustments. Our goal is to get one eighth of an inch toe in on the front of our tires. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to measure from the front 
and the back of our tires to make sure that we can get one eighth of an inch difference between the front and the back. Once you've got your toe set where you want it, you want to go ahead and make sure that you lock down your jam nut on the end of your tie rod. Now you'll notice that I only adjusted one wheel when I was performing my alignment. That's because when I was doing my visual inspection, I noticed that the passenger side wheel on this cart was sticking way out and was going out to the side. That's why I brought that wheel in and left the driver's side where it was supposed to be. Once you've performed your alignment, you can go ahead and reinstall your front bumper. And once that's done, that'll complete the installation for part number LIFT-503 on our 2011 Club Car Precedent. Thanks for watching this episode of Rocks Garage, and I'll see you next time.